better to be safe than sorry. I poured everything out. Now, this is better. The oldest deceased was Abraham Lewis, who died at the age of 38. Strange. It's as if it was still waiting for its owner. Why would they put an empty coffin here? Maybe I just don't understand local customs. Odd. The tomb seems to be for male family members only. But none of them lived to reach the age of 40. I can't grasp it properly. The crevice is too narrow. a coin. This won't be of any substantial value. No scratches, a perfect cut, and a very specific refraction of light. It takes my breath away. This must be a real diamond. What's this? I almost overlooked it. An interesting catch. I'll make some notes. A hand-rolled cigarette. I don't really know much about it, but I don't think this is usual cigarette paper. I wonder what an experienced smoker would think of it. Once it'll be necessary to search the sewers, Sergeant Carter will finally be useful. Sergeant, you told me you smoke sometimes. Yes, I'm partial to the odd smoke, sir. How much would this kind of cigarette cost? Oh, let me see. Well, hand rolled, that's nothing unusual. It depends on the tobacco, you know. Well, this one, for instance, smells very good. Why are you interested in it, sir? I found it near the column. It might have belonged to someone who knows what happened here. Really? How would you know that, sir? Because I doubt it would go unnoticed all day. And what would a typical resident of this district do if they were passing by chance and saw it lying there on the footpath? He would pick it up, sir. I see. So someone must have thrown it away tonight. Exactly. And it is more than probable that the person who threw it away knows what happened here. In that case, sir, I have such a theory, if it helps you, sir. Go ahead. No one rolls a cigarette in a hurry, sir. Uh, maybe in a pub or while one is waiting for someone, I guess it would be the latter case. 
It takes time to prepare the whole thing, sir. It's something like a ritual of killing time, sir. Not only time, Sergeant. Thank you for your remark. The mysterious smoker is slowly emerging. But if I really want to find him, I'll need more than one cigarette. I notice you are no stranger to the smoker's habits. Well, I picked up a bit over the years, sir. But are you also familiar with cigarette papers? The cigarette won't let you rest, will it, sir? I examined it under the magnifier, and it seems to me that the paper it is wrapped in is somewhat strange. But I might be wrong. That is why I'm asking you. Can I see it, sir? Certainly. Hmm. It is unusual. You're right, sir. One has to pay for higher quality goods. But some people are content with anything what comes into their hands. Newspapers are popular, for instance. They say it tastes better, sir, but I prefer the usual soft paper. Sorry, I can't tell what this cigarette is made of, sir. But obviously it's not newspaper. Indeed, sir. Unroll it, sir. Maybe you'll find out more then. Thank you for the advice, but that would destroy it. Maybe later. As you think, sir. I suppose the best thing I can do now is phone Chief Inspector Powell. Detective Sergeant Briscoe, put me through to Chief Inspector Powell, please. I see. And when will he return? It's urgent. All right, I'll call back later. Please tell him I called and that I'll be in the field now if he needs to talk to me. He'll know. Goodbye. He's not here, and he should be back in two hours, so what should I do now? I'm not going to waste my time. I'll search the neighborhood to try and find clues, and then we'll see. I'm just asking, nothing more. And I'm repeating that it is pointless. There is nothing to see in there. Well, if there is nothing to see, why don't you allow me to go in? I have to insist that you leave. Oh, I perfectly understand. Who's your superior? You can ask at the station. Thank you very much for your helpfulness. Any troubles, Carter? Not at all, sir. Just uh, this annoying journalist. He wants you to go in. Mind he stays on this side of the wall. Should I arrest him straight away, sir? Do you have any reason to do that? I think he's suspicious, sir. How come he appeared right here? Leave it up to me. So the journalist has gone for a ride. And he has the camera with him by complete coincidence, I'm sure. Unfortunately, I have no reason to confiscate it. Do you know that man? I do, sir, unfortunately. Why the regret? His name is Nathaniel Forrest. He brings nothing but trouble. I don't know how it's possible, sir, but any time anything happens, he's there. He's like a pain in my neck, sir. Which newspaper does he write for? 
The Courier, sir. A local sheet, nothing special. He publishes a photograph, adds several pages of rubbish, and people swallow it. But in my opinion, sir, serious people never read anything like that. As they say, wherever the devil can't go, he sends a journalist. Excuse me, are you with the press? And you with police, if I'm not mistaken. I see there is no need to pretend anything. So I suppose you will not mind several questions, will you? Of course not. What are you doing here so early in the morning? There's nothing strange about it. I'm working on an article about the funeral of Sir William which took place yesterday. You know, the noble man nicknamed Mad William or something. I bet I won't be the only journalist. Who will come here today, so I got up early. I suppose the family of the deceased is agreeable to that and that you have their consent? Inspector. I hope we two are not going to trespass upon each other's patch. Let me make it clear. I am no inspector, but I'm going to keep a close watch on you. You can count on that. And I'm prepared to pressure you, if it's necessary. I accept the challenge. It will be my pleasure to work with you. Not mine. Big-headed fool. Just wait, I'll show you. Did you know Sir William personally? No, we never met, thank God. Tell me, how can you write about someone you don't know? Inspector, everyone knew Sir William because of what he did during his life. I've talked to plenty of people who ran away from the horror. Trust me, the stories were terrible. Verified by whom? The horror of those people's eyes, Inspector. It will convince you more than anything else. This is leading nowhere. A prostitute in a church would be more credible than him. I could not overlook the machine. Do you like it? It has three gears. The latest technology. I was talking about the camera you have in that bag. Oh, that thing. I'm fairly common type. The picture's caught on a glass plate. It can be easily broken, which is why I had to buy a better bike, to lessen the risk. And I suppose you have it on you by complete coincidence. Not at all. I came to take some pictures of a tomb. A particular tomb. You don't even have enough imagination to think up a lie. I don't want to insult your intelligence. I still hope we'll come to an agreement and you'll let me in. I can make a famous man of you. Forget it. Pack your stuff and get away. He's laughing, laughing in my, in my face. face. Never seen such impudence before. Sir, you have no business here, so please leave. Don't count on it. Have you ever seen a prison cell from the inside? I have. But don't get me wrong, it's nothing to shout about. Exactly. Is that supposed to be a threat? You can't arrest me. I'll do it. I'll complain. You can. I'm not going to leave anyway. The public has a right to know what's going on. Mm. He didn't, didn't swallow, swallow the, bait. the bait. He's no amateur. The damaged tomb. Does it belong to a significant family? Significant? Not significant. Rather... cursed. Excuse me. What do you mean? Exactly what I am saying. The Lewis family, one of the oldest families in the whole town, was once highly respected. But when Sir William was born, the last heir, it seemed God turned away from them. And if not God, the townspeople certainly did. Nobody could bear to look at his lifeless face. Even yesterday, at the funeral, the coffin was kept closed during the whole ceremony. The night's events are the punishment for our weakness. 
That's simply the way it is. Wait a minute. I need to make this clear. The damaged tomb belongs to the deceased's family. The one whose funeral was held just yesterday. Precisely. We placed Sir William Lewis's lifeless body in his tomb in the dead of night. And this morning, that same tomb was desecrated. Father Mulcahy, can you be discreet? I am a priest. I was inside the tomb, despite your request not to. Why are you telling this to me? You will confess to God, not to me. The coffin is empty. What? It's... it's not possible. Please, stay calm. Dear Lord, but that would surely mean... Are you sure you opened the coffin? It was open when I stepped in. But what shall we do now? For now, keep it to yourself. You can count on that. Do you realize what a scandal this is? Leave it to us. We will solve it. It's becoming pretty complicated. I have to find out as much about the deceased as I can. Is it true what's said about Sir William? You mean that Sir William was a beast and a monster? Yes, that is true. I must confess that I don't know what to think. Who of us is able to understand God's intention? But I am sure it was not God's will that he came into this world. What do you mean? When he was born, it was as if he wasn't one of God's creations. He had a totally lifeless face. Understand me, it is not easy to talk about it. I understand. Tell me, how did his family cope with it? It was very difficult, especially for his mother. She just could not bear it. And eventually the strain was such that she took her own life. We had to bury her on the Gallows Hill. Where is it? It is a place forgotten by God. A cemetery for suicides. And what about his father? He disappeared the night when all the servants left the mansion. And then only William remained with Lady Miriam, his grandmother. All this just because he had a disfigured face? No, of course not. When he grew older, strange stories began to be told about him. Once, it was a dead cat in his arms. Once, he was found sitting next to a dead horse. And whenever a maid disappeared, you can easily guess whose work it was said to have been. At that time, his father was still alive and kept the estate together, but that was not to last. The servants revolted, set the house on fire, and fled. His father vanished, and only ruins remained. A sad and tragic story. I'd like to know more. You must excuse me, detective, but there is nothing more to say. The coffin was closed during the whole funeral, is that right? Yes. By whose request? Lady Miriam. The grandmother of the deceased wished it so. That's suspicious, don't you think? I can't understand why. I think it might have already been empty before the funeral. Perhaps it was Lady Miriam's last attempt to protect her grandson. Everybody hates him and almost destroyed the family. If he disappeared, he would soon be forgotten about. Lady Miriam might have faked his death in the hope that is what would happen. I am sorry, but this seems rather far-fetched to me. The absolute isolation and the permanent fear of discovery would be worse than a prison sentence. You're right. 
But people sometimes do desperate things when they have no other choice. It's possible that those delinquents tried to break into the church. Perhaps the gravedigger tried to stop them, and so they killed him. But what do the destruction of the tomb and disappearance of the body have to do with it? It can be a provocation, or a camouflage. They try to put us off the scent. I cannot believe it. We're at the very beginning of the investigation. It's my duty to examine every possibility. If I can help with anything, I am at your service. In that case, I would like to ask you to check the church inventory, just in case something is missing. Yes, that is a good idea. At least I can make myself useful. If you find something out and I'm not here anymore, send a message to the station. You can rely on me, detective. God bless you. The journalist finally gave up, but there's still a strange feeling in my stomach. I see Mr. Forrest gave up? Well, sir, I would think so, only if I didn't know him. What do you mean? It wouldn't be in his character to leave so easily, sir. What else could he do, in your opinion, if you know him so well? I didn't worry as long as I had him in my sight, but now he might have found another way in. I can watch over the main gate, but the cemetery is too large. I would just like to remind you, sir, that I wanted to go to the station for support. Thank you for the reminder, but don't worry about that. As for the journalist, he surely realized that it's useless. If you think so, sir, you are the detective. There's just something about it. It's really dubious that he would give up so easily. Blasted grave digger. Stop! Stay where you are! It can't be true. How did he get here? That rascal got what he deserved. I hope he's broken something, too. Just you wait. I'll get you. He's gone. I wonder how I will explain this to my superiors. He didn't break his leg, but at least the photography session is over. The journalist tried to take as many photos as he could, but he didn't have as much time as I. I think it's high time to return to the police station now. The chief inspector will most likely be back, and he might be interested in what's going on. The glass plates are missing. So he must have taken them. He had this all planned. <laughs> it 
It wasn't his fault. Quite the contrary. If I had taken his advice, I wouldn't have to explain to my superiors how the photos of the crime scene got into the newspaper. I think it's high time to return to the police state. The chief inspector will most likely be back. Detective Sergeant Briscoe. Yes, that's me. Put me through, please. Good day, sir. I have several reports. The tomb of a noble family has been destroyed, but that is not the worst part at all. The body of the deceased Sir William has probably been stolen, and... Exactly, sir. The coffin is empty. Yes, sir, I'm totally aware it is not an ordinary robbery, but I have even more news. The grave digger was murdered. I tried to call you, but you weren't in. So I went to do the preliminary examination of the crime scene, and I secured some evidence. Yes, sir, of course I understand the priorities. But the murder was committed in a very brutal way. The local vicar knows about the incident, but now that you bring it up, I'm afraid an intrusive journalist managed to take a picture of the gravedigger's corpse. I don't know how it happened, but we should be ready to face certain results. The courier, some local sheet. Of course, I realize that my career depends on that. That's why I'm asking you to entrust the case to me. I won't disappoint you, sir. You can trust me. Thank you very much for your confidence. Goodbye. Ugh, that was close. A damned journalist will cause nothing but trouble. Brutality attracts people like the light attracts moths. But this is my case, and it's going to be big. And once it erupts, I'll be ready.